lovely. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome uh, all of you for all of you attending for and coming to see our presentation. We're very proud of the hard work we've done. Uh, we'd also like to thank Cecile and her team for uh, having the Athabasca Health Authority as part of this process. It's been definitely challenging, but an exciting process for us. So, as you can see. We have the standard work combination sheet. It acts as our agenda throughout the presentation. It also identifies the order in which we will present and the time it will take each of us to complete our sections. We have a tack time of 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry guys. Our lovely team picture here, as I mentioned, Earlier, we have a lovely hybrid team of members from Prince Albert Parkland Health, Athabasca Health Authority, and more recently, the Health Quality Council. So we have Neil Falk, Chuck McCann, our sub-team lead, who was excellent, I might add, Judy Friesen from Athabasca Health, Wheeler Bassingway from Health Quality Council, and myself, the team lead for our project. Um, as you can see from our project form, this project came this project came out of a critical incident that happened last fall in the ED. A patient died due to complications from not having a BPMH completed, and um, there was recognition from the process owner that patients are being harmed um, in the ED because of preventable medication errors. Our project title is to eliminate medication defects by ensuring the completion of a best possible medication history, uh, our BPMH, which you'll hear us refer to throughout the presentation, on all emergency patients at the Victoria Hospital Emergency Department. Medication defects have occurred in the past and continue, as I mentioned earlier, resulting in one critical incident, which was the, um, the purpose for having this completed. In the current state, our B the BPMH is not being consistently done on all high-risk emergency patients as illustrated in the data provided on the project sheet. So the team in partnership with the sponsor, process owner, and content experts decided to complete a BPMH on all emergency department patients, which Chuck will be discussing when, when he shares the future state value stream map. In the pre-Kaizen current state, the theme of the mistake-proofing project is to ensure greater patient safety by maintaining 100% of high-risk patients who require a BPMH get one in a timely and consistent way. I'll ask you to turn your attention to our current state value stream map, our pre-Kaizen state. Our lead time was 58.51 seconds, 58 minutes and 51 seconds. Our value added time was 73% and our non-value added time was 27%. We observed a process through, um, at the beginning of our value stream, current state value stream map. So a patient arrives at triage, patient meets BPMH criteria and a sticker was then placed on the patient's chart and finally it completes with the primary nurse completing the BPMH. So the process the team identified, uh, through the process we identified a number of Kaizen bursts such as uh, a need for workload leveling, triage bell not being used, no visible display of error or defect data, uh, perhaps a review of non-nursing duties, multiple forms, lack of standard work implementation, and lack of corrective action to audits. Um, and we utilized the fishbowl as our tool for a root cause analysis to identify our Kaizen bursts on the current value stream. And finally, I'll conclude with our VMI assignment. The VM, VMI assignment identifies that in the current state, the mistake proofing level was to uh, end of line inspection. There was a 72% defect rate before the improvements from this mistake proofing project. And the new level of mistake proofing is still at a level two. However, the defect rate after the improvements is now at 49%, which indicates a 32% improvement overall since the inception of this project. Morning. So Jen spoke to you a little bit about why this was important for patient safety. I'm going to speak with you a little bit about the area itself. When we look at the staff levels in the emergency department here in the Prince Albert Parkland Health Region, we see there are five registered nurses, there's one licensed practical nurse, and two physicians during what's deemed a double coverage hour. This happens from 11 to 7 daily. There's 16 physicians that work in the ED, 
their shifts are eight hours. The RN and LPN shifts are 12 hours in length. We have one fabulous nurse unit manager and one excellent nurse educator. The volumes themselves, uh, according to the ED's most recent data, uh, show that levels have remained fairly cons consistent. Um, what you're seeing here, I think most people would be familiar if those of you um, in the room aren't familiar with the CTAS, essentially what it is is the Canadian triage acuity scale. And uh, what that is, is it describes best practice and highlights guidelines for the time a patient should be seen. What should that time be? Uh, prioritization, etc. So those CTAS, what we see here is that uh, your CTAS 1, 2, and 3 on a, it seems that they take up about those people more than half of, of what you're seeing in the ED. So of course then your CTAS fours and fives are that remaining volume. If you look to the recent reported disposition, you're seeing about 23 to 2400 people um, per month as total visits. And within that percentage, you've got about, what is it, 18 to 20 percent that become, you can go to the next one, Jen. Um, you see that 18 to 20 percent of folks are being either transferred to Saskatoon or are being admitted to the Victoria Hospital. Um, also, I would let you know that on average they see about 80 people a day. I'll draw your attention to the next shift, Jen, there, the target progress report. What this highlights for those of you that might not be familiar, it's essentially a way for us to track if all these changes we're making are in fact resulting in improvements or if they're just changes for changes sake. So what you see here is our quality measure. Um, that would be the number of defects. So how we looked at that, we essentially did an audit. How many BPMHs were complete or not completed, essentially. If they were not complete, that was considered a defect. We also wanted to look at our lead time when we began. Lead time was 58 minutes and 51 seconds. By lean methodology, traditionally, if there isn't a best practice that you reach for, you go for a 50% reduction. So that's what we aimed for. And then, of course, our cycle times at the bottom, you can see were 43 minutes and 5 seconds when we looked at our baseline. And again, we aimed for a 50% reduction there. And of course, I will draw your attention to the top. Our target for our defect was zero, of course. We never aimed to even hurt one person. So we, of course, go for zero there. Good morning. I'll be talking to you about the ideas that we tested and some of the PDSAs that we tested. We started off the process looking at the literature in regards to BPMH and uh, prepared a PowerPoint presentation uh, for the process owners and for the staff on the unit. Uh, the literature revealed that the um, Accreditation Canada, it will be an ROP in 2015 to do best possible medication history in emergency departments. Best possible medication history is step one to doing med rec. So we're, uh, the Accreditation Canada is looking at 100% compliance of best possible medication history. Safe for Healthcare Now also has standards as well as the Institute for Safe Medicine Practices. So we did a PowerPoint to reveal the standards related to this. We really explored the title of the, of the project. When we were at Virginia Mason, our consultant encouraged us to look at not, not call it best possible medication history, but you know accurate medication history or that. But because of the literature in Canada and the terms that are used in Canada, we, we decided to stay with, with the acceptable term of best possible medication history. Next, we did a PDSA in regards to um, increasing awareness about uh, medication history. We developed a series of posters that we posted in emergency. The first of these were for the staff that were the nurses and physicians help stop medication incidents. The, the, the reason for best possible medication history is to decrease uh, un unsafe practice or incidents. The next was uh, a general poster that said, did you know? And it has some stats about medication incidents in, in Canada. And the next poster was in regards to patients. Uh, and it, for patients it was, how, what can you do to help? And encouraging them to keep a list of medications and bring it with them to emergency. Our next PDSA was in gar regards to communication to enhance team communication. And we developed a communication board that was posted directly across from the 
from the nursing station. And you can see our board was quite colorful to attract attention. It included the work standard and it included the thermometers here. We'll talk later about the thermometers where we monitored the progress of compliance of best possible medication history. Then we, then we focused on the standard work for, for BPMH. We spent um, quite a bit of time on the GIMBA, just observing what was happening, talking to staff about their, their opinion on things. We met with the process owners, the contact experts, and the, the sponsors. And uh, there was, I guess, uh, we found too many forms, too much information, and conflicting information about BPMH. Uh, some referred it, to it interchangeably with MedRec. Um, and, and it was being charted on different forms. Some referred to it as the, on the doctor's order sheet, on the nurse's notes, in, in a variety of places. So we worked to one source for BPMH and we developed standard work for, for that. The, um, so the, the BPMH is completed on a purple document called the, the PIP form, and it's a computerized form that's generated uh, at, at registration. Through the, through the uh, huddles, we, we sat in on daily huddles and we're on the GIMBA as well as meetings with the process owners. We, we revised the standard work a couple of times to reflect some important changes. We moved from initially when we started the, the, uh, the standard work that had been prepared on the unit in September of 2013, um, it, they were doing BPMH on high risk patients. Based on our lit review and at the strong recommendation of the SMO, we moved from, from high risk patients to all patients. We also addressed the issue of initialing the document and just signing the last page issues related to returning patients that are just popping in for a, a routine treatment or a repeat treatment, and how to complete forms when there's no medication on the form. From there, we moved to the and-on. Um, we did a, a PDSA on and-ons. When the process started, there was a small um, flag on the chart to indicate. We spent a lot of time actually on and on, but in the end when we, when we went to 100% patients needing BPMH, the and on wasn't required. So, uh, so um, we'll move on now to education. The next idea we tested was, was education for nurses and physicians. <clears throat> and so we did stand, standard work. <coughs> Excuse me. We did standard work on education, uh, or I should say work standard for education and uh, multiple skills training checklist. And our, <clears throat> the nurse educator in Emerge completed that. From there we moved on to audits. Sorry, I'm just going to have a quick drink here. We moved on to completion of audits. Story about that. Um, we audited every fifth chart on a daily basis and monitored our results. This is the last week of audits that we completed, and you can see we achieved a 51% completion rate. You know, that's a significant improvement when we started around 24 or so, and we feel that the, our ideas contributed to that. The audit results, um, or we'll go to the next one, Jim. We did a work standard for audits and then de developed a thermometer to display the, the results on the thermometer. And, uh, and these were done on, uh, posted on the uh, communication board. Our last uh, incentive, or our last idea, was an incentive plan, and we developed a poster uh, for incentive at various completion rates. And we, this week, we offered coffee and donuts and emerged reaching a, a target of 50%. Thank you. So, as you can see there, initially our, uh, our process in, had uh, multiple steps uh, and a total lead time of 8 minutes and 30, 51 seconds. But unbeknownst to us, um, there was a plan to relocate the, uh, the triage office. And uh, when that happened, uh, it, it happened about the same time that we moved to the auditing every file and, and, and doing BPMHs on everybody that walked in the door that actually decreased our lead time. It, it changed the steps to two and it decreased our lead time from that 50 
eight minutes to, to 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Um, next slide. Uh, so when you look at our current uh, state process map, what you see is that we were able to eliminate a number of the starbursts. First thing we were able to get rid of was the uh, triage valve with the relocation and, and a number of other things. It just wasn't necessary anymore. Uh, next thing that uh, we did was we, we dealt with the fact that there was no visual display uh, by creating the, uh, the poster board and the audit measures the, and, and posting them up daily and weekly. Uh, we dealt with the multiple forms. Uh, BPMH was being completed in a number of different places in, and are located in a number of different places in the chart. So it was really difficult to even figure out if there was one there. Uh, and a physician would have to look through a number of forms. So we changed the standard work and uh, made it just so that the, the BPMH is completed only on the PIP form in, in that one location. So we got down to one form. And the uh, last thing we did is we created a number of, of pieces of work standards and, and other pieces of standard work to address some of that stuff. Next slide. Uh, so pre-project, if you take a look at this, the pre-project, the, the amount of travel to complete the BPMH was 69 feet. Next slide. And uh, after the relocation of the office, it was 4.5 feet for a decrease of 93%. Next slide. So when you look at our, uh, our, our uh, data chart, our, our overall chart, uh, you can see that we started with a 76% uh, defect rate and that we ended up with a 49% uh, uh, defect rate. And one more. So uh, if you take a look at our, our uh, cycle time, um, initially it was 43 minutes and 5 seconds. Our targeted cycle time was uh, 21 minutes and 52 seconds, but because of the relocation of the office, that helped us get it down to actually exceed that and get it down to 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Um, we actually had uh, quite a few major uh, accomplishments throughout this and so as we go through the newspaper I'll just highlight some of them. Um, we, we did meet with the process owners and the educators on a regular basis uh, through our project. <clears throat> we also um, were able to create some education processes and, and I think the big thing we saw was there was a, a, a misunderstanding of what BPMH really was compared to MedRec and, and staff are using them independently or together. And so as we started to build that, that whole process around what is a BPMH and educate staff, there was, a, I think, a better understanding of what we were trying to accomplish within the area. So we updated um, some of the visual measures within the actual department uh, to be able to actually give them some visual cues of how they were doing from the, the weeks uh, moving forward. We standardized some of the data collection functions. So when we first started, there was you know approximately uh, nine or ten charts being audited on a regular basis. When we finished the audit standard, we were actually doing every fifth audit or every fifth patient with that came into the ER for, for every day. We also had some uh, processes around. Um, the implementation on all patients, so what we found was when we implemented on all patients, we really didn't see a, a huge decrease in the percentage complete, and we started to go through that, um, and we realized that it there wasn't a real good criteria around that, so implementing it on all patients uh, has had a good effect on the, on the area, because now we're looking at all patients, and, just, and there's no uh, criteria that they have to think about uh, before they actually go to do a VPN. There's some things that we still have left to accomplish. And sorry, I'm having trouble reading with the dark up here, but um, uh, we, we felt that there needed to be a, a, a BPM champion, BPMH champions, um, and they need to be identified. So we started that process and, and uh, we've uh, tasked um, the, group, the process owners with uh, the ability to do that. 
We also needed to implement the standard works based on the new protocol and test with the ED staff, and so train the new standard work. Develop the standard, uh, implement the standard audit process is, is still needs to be done and that training on it, and then make day BPMH part of their daily huddles each and every day. And lastly, but not least, some of the lessons learned. Staff engagement and buy-in to the process is crucial. Um, the importance of valuing the data and making the data visual as part of our daily management. Uh, truly needing to understand the scope of your work, what it is and what you're trying to accomplish. And know your business, know your metrics, and know your people. And finally, we'd like to thank the patients and their families uh, that we interrupted through the process. Our ED staff, especially our triage nurses and, and nurse educator, Tammy, thank you very much. To the physicians who were uh, there while we were moving forward, the process only, Tracy, thank you very much. Uh, John Piggott, Dr. Wessels and Dr. Gallen through the process, uh, and our contact experts, Monique, Stacy, April, and Dr. Hookinson, uh, as well as Cynthia for our KPO support.